This is Talk Radio across the UK, online, on DAB+, and on the Talk Radio app. Evenings with Kevin O'Sullivan on Talk Radio. Well, uh, it's time now to talk about obesity uh, and uh, Boris Johnson's uh, increasing love of the nanny state. Uh, let's have a listen to the great man laying out his plans to tackle the crisis surrounding fatness. I know there are many people who are in the same sort of position as I was and who, who want to lose weight. And that's why we're investing now in uh, the, that whole national objective. £100 million to help people to access uh, GP appointments, to get the right apps. And uh, we're also looking at various kind of fit miles schemes as well. Uh, I don't know, £100 million quid. I don't know. Is that really the best way to spend money? Uh, telling us what we can and cannot eat. Is that the government's job? I say it's not. Uh, let's talk to the head of Young Voices UK, Jason Reed. Good evening, Jason. Good evening, Kevin. Uh, well, we've discussed this before. Uh, I think we both agree. It isn't the government's job to tell us what we can and cannot eat, is it? It's got nothing to do with the government, but even if it did, the kinds of policies that are being pushed, this latest report pushes for uh, advertising restrictions on junk food, the government's own research, so this isn't some sceptical think tank, the government's own research is very, very pessimistic about the kind of impact that it would have. Um, they reckon that banning all advertising of what it, call, what it deems to be unhealthy foods after 9pm would have a grand total of 1.7 calories worth of effect per day <laughs> on our diets. 1.7 calories. That, for context, that's roughly half a smarty. That's the difference that it would make. It? <laughs> it's seriously, that is the government's own research. It's freely available online. They've still got this report out for some reason. Um, but it, yeah, it's pretty damning. Um, there's... I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Jason, when I have a smarty, because I'm a kind of uh hell for leather guy you know i i, I just i just don't care i'm 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 a daredevil uh a real <laughs> I, I i always go for a whole smarty when i eat smarties so that's living a, life that, on that, the edge that, 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 <laughs> life on the edge so that would be uh what would that be 3.4 uh calories uh i mean you, you know it's a joke isn't it and also you know for that little effect just so Boris can go around saying, oh, look at me, I'm trying to tackle the obesity crisis because I've had my own problems in that area. Uh, that now, whilst it'll have no effect, people won't pay any attention. It will have an effect on the economy and it will have effect, uh, an effect on perfectly decent companies trying to make a living. Absolutely right. It will have an effect on all kinds of different industries. Uh, my mum bakes cakes for a living. This kind of law would make her Instagram account illegal because she can't post pictures of uh, what the government deems to be unhealthy food. You're kidding. Seriously. Your mum yeah, will um, not be able to post pictures of cakes. That is correct, because, because the government is concerned that children are being bombarded by pictures of cakes and pictures of burgers, and so we need to protect them by cracking down on all this online content. The other suggestions that are coming out are just as loopy. I mean, um, there's this push, for example, from this Obesity Alliance um, for front of pack labeling to make, make it clearer what's in products. I don't know about you, but I had no idea that there was sugar in chocolate until there was a big red label to really? tell me so. I didn't know that. It's, it's baffling, isn't it? I mean, it's just patronizing nonsense. We all know what's in the food we eat. And if we make choices, to eat unhealthy food, then we become a little bit better. And that's the way life is. We can't eliminate all risk from food without making our lives miserable and without making the poor poor up through all these sugar taxes and salt taxes. There is no good outcome here. Yeah, and this is, uh, lest we forget, this is a Conservative government, a Tory government. The uh, Tories are supposed to stand for small government, not big state. Socialists stand for big state. Uh, but this kind of interference in nutrition into what ordinary sentient adults decide to eat or not eat, to drink or not drink, uh, that's not small government. That is massive uh, big state nanny statism, isn't it? This is a huge explosion in the nanny state. Uh, Boris Johnson is going back on everything he's ever said about the nanny state, about personal freedoms, about the importance of individual choice. And the Labour Party at their conference, they endorsed 
uh, the, the bonkers national food strategy calling for sugar taxes and things like that, which means that people like you and I, who just want to be left alone, don't have anywhere to go. Who are we supposed to vote for? If this government is so worried about the health of the nation, uh, then uh, isn't it time that they made uh, smoking cigarettes illegal? Uh, because surely by uh, all uh, de decent standards of morality, it cannot in all due conscience continue to make money uh, out of the distribution of cigarettes that uh, can kill people. But yet it does. It uh, keeps uh, dipping its hand into that pot, doesn't it? It does. It's hard to wean yourself off the uh, money like that when you've got it coming in so easily because people are addicted to cigarettes. If you're wanting to reduce deaths from cigarettes, there are so many ways to do that. And yet we've got the government giving in to the World Health Organization, cracking down on vaping and cracking down on all kinds of other tobacco harm reduction products um, in the name of cracking down on smoking. It doesn't make any sense. The World Health Organization launched what it calls a tobacco free initiative. And yet the tobacco free initiative also wants to ban the best tools we've ever discovered for helping people quit smoking. I'm willing to bet that the number of people that die due to smoking in this country is up there with the number of people who die uh, due to obesity. Uh, it's very hard to give up smoking. I'm here to tell you that, uh, but I did do it finally, uh, eventually. What was it? Mark Twain said, it's very easy to give up smoking. I've done it hundreds of times. So that was my story. Uh, but I finally succeeded. But uh, it's also very hard uh, to give up, uh, if you're a government, making money from smoking. So don't lecture us about sugar and salt and fatty foods and junk food when you very happily continue to live off the proceeds of a deadly habit like smoking tobacco. Yeah, being being poor is expensive enough already. You have a poverty premium. That means that poor people already pay more for energy, for insurance, for credit, for all kinds of other things. The last thing that the government should be doing is taxing uh, the lifestyle choices that we make, whether that's food or whether it's smoking or whether it's e-cigarettes or whether it's alcohol, anything like that. The government has no place involving itself because all it does is make the poor poorer. All it does is try to price the poor out of pleasure so that any little indulgences that you have in your life are cut off um, because if you're poor you shouldn't have the right to uh, to indulge in those little pleasures but I, I don't agree with that philosophy I don't think you do either life shouldn't be a drudge even if you're poor no uh, and uh, what this feeds into is that people like Jeremy Corbyn uh, their vision of the perfect human paradise is lots and lots of little serfs uh, looking up uh, gratefully to Mother State. Oh, thank you, Mother State, for looking after us, for giving us a health service and doing, giving us lots of lovely hospitals and everything you do. Mother State, we worship you. Uh, that's the socialist vision of the world. Uh, you expect it from that lot, uh, but we do not expect it from the Tories. And yet... Boris Johnson increasingly, in my view, is creating a kind of mother state that we're all supposed to suck on the teat of. Uh, and I just don't think that's conservatism. It's another area where this guy, uh, in terms of uh, conservatism, uh, just does not know what he's talking about. He doesn't have a clue. And he's, he's very blatantly going against everything he stands for and everything that people who voted for him voted for. He used to be a libertarian. He used to talk about Britain as the land of liberty. He used to, um, when he was elected in 2019, he promised to roll back the continuing creep of the nanny state, his words. Huh. And now here he is with, uh, with his tax rises, his national insurance rises, and with all these kinds of creative ways to regulate our lives. It's not what we voted for. It's not conservative, and he has no place doing it. Yeah, and a lot of people say, oh, well, you see, the thing is, uh, you know, he had this uh, brush with death because he got COVID and due sympathy for him there, uh, realised he had to lose weight, and so therefore he's become very obsessed with the obesity crisis. Well, we can't have a bloke governing the, the country through the prism of his own experiences. Oh, you know, my, the bus was late yesterday, I'll, I'll spend £400 billion on new buses or something like that. You know, this is just sort of selfish kind of uh egotistical government isn't it all oh, this happened to me therefore uh, i must do something about everyone uh, concerning that issue in this case obesity it's a bit bizarre isn't it it's very odd and you're absolutely right that's not any way to 
run a government. But it's no surprise when you have the way the public health is governed in this country and in other countries around the world and the same thing in the World Health Organization. It's a closed door system. You have all these so-called scientists and all these uh, public health lobby regulation enthusiasts and they all sit around and they all violently agree with each other about how much of a big problem obesity is and we need to solve it by doing all these different things to ruin people's lives and to limit what we can and can't do. And so you have this situation where the people at the very top of the chain are asleep at the wheel and they are using um, all their powers in order to make our lives that little bit sadder. And of course, the fact that we're coming out of a pandemic is uh, it's a gold mine for them because all of our civil liberties have uh, been sacrificed in an unprecedented way. And they're now able to use that for their own pet causes. Yeah, you're right. The uh, COVID crisis has only uh, embellished uh, this government's belief that it has a right to stick its nose into all of our businesses, that it is in control of us as individuals. Uh, you and me, Jason, we stand for the power of the individual over the state, not the other way around. And as soon as we can get that message across to Boris Johnson, uh, the better. Uh, good to talk, Jason. Always a pleasure. Jason Reed, head of the Young Voices UK.